Good evening everyone and hello, my name is Luai Guda. Uh, I'm an aerospace engineering student at the university uh, and obviously I'm from Egypt as you can see. Uh, I'll be taking you today uh, to a trip through the Egyptian land, a trip that actually spans thousands of kilometers so pack it up and get ready. Um, as you can see in this space image from uh, of Egypt, uh, we can see the Egyptian Nile or the Egyptian part of the Nile. Uh, this is the Red Sea, the Mediterranean Sea. Um, this part of the desert we call the Western Desert because yeah, it's due west. And this is the Eastern Desert. Uh, Cairo would be at the tip here. Uh, this part and this is where you will find the Giza pyramids um, yeah and that's a point here because uh, whenever you hear the word Egypt the first thing that comes to your mind is the pharaohs right I mean um, like the pyramids and all that stuff the pyramids the sphinx uh, the temples, uh, yeah, I mean, the temples, more temples, and more temples, and all that stuff. It's fascinating. It's like more than 4,000 years old. It's really, like, I'm, I'm really proud of this, but it's very important to understand that this is not all of Egypt. Um, there's a lot of, a, a much more to see, much more to experience. Uh, I have been to the pyramids only once in my life. I can say that most Egyptians haven't visited the, the, the pyramids yet. Only like, um, mostly like seen it, seen it from, from away, uh, like far away, but haven't actually visited the pyramids. Uh, the pharaohs, like the, the, the pharaotic uh, and ancient world of Egypt is really fascinating and and there's a lot to to talk about in this area but I'll be showing you um, some part of Egypt that even many Egyptians haven't seen yet and it's far away from the pyramids and the pharaohs uh, I, I think it would be very interesting so to begin with, why did I choose this specific topic about Egypt? Uh, it actually has, has to do with with what I have been doing in Egypt. Uh, so I actually, I, I've been volunteering with the Egyptian Society for Astronomy for more than seven years. Um, and in the job description, there was a lot of uh, 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 traveling around. Uh, and as you can see from this map, I've been to a lot of places in Egypt uh, over like the course of five years or something like that uh, from deep caves and deserts uh, to the to the highest mountains um, to the rocky um, yeah deserts and sand dunes and all of that stuff um, because the society actually used to do still doing uh, a lot of trips and camps, astronomy camps in the desert because the skies are really uh, clear and you can do a lot of stargazing with the telescopes and, and a lot of activities uh, away from the, from the uh, cities. I've been to the farthest, I think that would be to the Libyan borders, that's the Libyan borders. Uh, and then like that's the most western part you can travel to. Uh, and then there's this like most th southern eastern part you can travel to. That's Halayb and Sheratin. It's a really interesting uh, part of Egypt too. Uh, there's a lot of a lot of things to do in Sinai, and I, I imagine you can see that there's like a quarter of the country that is just um, empty, and unfor unfortunately. We can't go there it's it's like prohibited and stuff like that but there's one interesting thing there just in the corner uh there's a actually um a huge meteorite that hit this area millions of years ago and it turned like the whole place around it into crystals that the sand due to heat had 
turn to crystals and I haven't been there I have seen some photos I'm not sure if they were real but I've been told a lot about this place um, and very few actually have been able to to visit this place um, so let's not um, get into side talks a lot uh, and let's start with our first destination and it's the farthest yet uh, it's this little dot here and that's actually the Siwa Oasis. Uh, it's a very historic land or city. Uh, it, yeah, obviously it consists of a lot of lakes, um, vege um, agriculture and small cities. Uh, it's, it's an urban oasis like f around 500 kilometers away from Cairo. So a trip like uh, traveling to this place from Cairo would take around with the bus around seven to nine hours uh, minimum uh, it's an isolated settlement and has been like during the course of history and there have been at this moment around 33,000 uh, people living then there um, to relate this to the ancient Egyptian there has been actually uh, there is still a, an oracle of Amun Amun is the an Egyptian god and that this place is still there it's like a temple uh, and actually Alexander the Great before uh, getting into war with um, the Persian traveled from Alexandria to Cairo and then from Cairo uh, or uh, not to Cairo there was no Cairo at the moment to Tiba and from there he traveled to Siwa Oasis uh, to go to and, and went to the Oracle of Amun uh, to get their answer on whether he would win uh, the war if if he went to war with the Persian and they said that yeah you are the son of Amun and you can do that and then yeah uh, so this place still exists it's it's really amazing that such such things still exist there uh, and yeah let's take a little closer closer look at uh, Siwa Oasis and this uh, historical majestic place so um, the inhabitants there uh, are really known for um, planting and and like their dates and olives uh, many many people travel not, not only travel but uh, try to get dates from there especially the dates they are really different from anywhere else you can get from from Egypt um, um, and I mean, uh, if you have, if you ever go to Egypt, I would really recommend going there just to try the dates. It's really different. It's really amazing. Um, most of the people, uh, the main uh, uh, population in Siwa are Berbers or barbarians, uh, and they, as I said before, they have been living there for almost um, like the ancient Egyptian times. Uh, their houses are made of small, uh, like the, uh, small red bricks, and yeah, they they have they don't have like uh, huge buildings or or, or hotels or so. As I said before, it's a very small city. However, it's very made for tourists and tourism. Uh, sometimes the houses are even like very very uh, be uh, like simple as to be and made of mold, uh, as you can see in this small picture over here and yeah as you can see from the big pictures too um, they mainly re rely on agriculture uh, as their way of living there's actually the Siwa salt lakes uh, and it's not just one but several uh, because of the salt mines uh, over there and these lakes are like they have a very large percentage of salts uh, that's why the density is very high and it's like the Dead Sea if, if you heard about it uh, and because of this very large density of water you can easily float uh, and not like uh, yeah sink as you see that man reading uh, actually like lying around and just uh, reading a book that, that's really <laughs> relaxing actually uh, see what the, the salt lakes are very uh, healthy for your skin and eye infection a lot of people go there as like in, in healthy tourism uh, and there has been this legend that uh, Queen Cleopatra bathed actually in, in one of the, these uh, pools uh, before going to the Oracle of Amun 
and stuff like that. It's it's a legend, of course, but I mean these uh, pools are still here since then, uh, and that's one of the things that makes them very fascinating. Uh, what else you can do there? Well, if you go to the desert, desert, then you have to see the sand. And what's really known a lot about the the Siwa Desert is the the soft sand and the sand dunes that cover the area uh, they call this place the great sand sea because as you can see it's like a sand sea waves and dunes of very soft sand where people go with four by four cars and like they ride along um, it can be sometimes very dangerous uh, if you're yeah, if you're alone and and your car stuck around or get torn over because you you like rolled uh, over a very steep dune, I have done this uh, a lot of times. But it's re it's really amazing. It's really um, a different experience. Uh, and then when it gets darker, uh, you don't actually go to sleep because there's a lot of other activities that you can do. Very interesting activities that you can do, and it begins with actually living in a camp just like the Bedouins um, most of the trips that go to these areas they uh, the organizers actually cooperate with the Bedouins and uh, the, the, the Bedouins there they like um, plan everything from from getting their the 4x4 cars are mainly or mostly uh, belong to the Bedouins because they know every like the places and where to go and where not to go, where it's, it's dangerous and dangerous and where it's not, uh, and then they actually also uh, plan the camp and the camping itself. They build the tents, they they provide the food and everything. And as I said before, these areas are very important for astronomy uh, uh, hobbyists or astronomy am amateur astronomers because the light pollution is very limited there's actually no light pollution at all and you can see a very wonderful starry night uh, such as this uh, so yeah that that this photo this image shows a lot uh, many of the small tents or people gathering around uh, sitting around the fire uh, that's that's one of the th many things that um, marks these type of, of trips uh, where the Bedouins actually like lit a fire, uh, they make tea, people sit around and stories get told. It's, it's really amazing under the starry night, dark skies. Uh, you can take pictures with the stars. Uh, that's also amazing uh, souvenir. And yeah, it's like, I mean, I can tell you a lot of about the, the stars over there. That's actually Orion constellation. Uh, you can see the Orion's belt um, and a lot of the shiny stars, Betelgeuse. Uh, and Orion's uh, nebula. It's really amazing that that photo was taken in, in in the winter with a professional camera to to get like uh, to be able to um, capture the the dim stars. Uh, a lot of people go there to to do these things uh, for astronomy to observe to stargaze with the te with the telescopes. Okay, so this was uh, our first trip to Siwa, 500 kilometers from Cairo. Uh, about nine hours uh, that was a little bit uh, fast but believe me in, in real life it, it lasts a longer time <laughs> so where else would we go now from Siwa uh, so we went from Cairo we took this long road to Siwa and then we will get a little further back to the what we call the white desert and it's a really fascinating place because it's not just a normal desert um, it's a black and white desert <laughs> and yeah it's it's a little near to Cairo uh, around 300 kilometers 250 kilometers and what really makes it stand alone is its white and black uh, landscapes yeah, that's right. Like we have a black and white desert, <laughs> and you, as you can see here, uh, uh, the white is actually calcium rock formations, uh, white calcium rock formations, and 
the black regions are volcanic rocks from the Jurassic period, like uh, around 180 million years old or something like that. Um, and what one of the fascinating things that people can see there is these large white chalk rock formations uh, created um, over millions of years through erosion by wind and sand and stuff like that. And as you can see, like there are very famous sh shapes like a rabbit, uh, chicken, a marshmallow, and a lot of other things that like, I mean, actually this, this shape, for example, that's have been known to all people as the rabbit. And yeah, that's the marshmallow, that's the chicken, as I said before. And you can see a lot of other things. Uh, they, they cover the whole area there. And uh, the, the Great Sand Sea that uh, we talked about in Siwa extends also to this area of, of the desert, to this part of the desert. And well, we don't have snow, but we have the boards. And when, when you don't have snow to, to, to do a snowboarding, well, you have to do something. And that's when we do a sandboarding. Uh, and I don't know if you heard about this before, but it's really, <laughs> it's it's really fun. It's different. I haven't tried snowboarding before, but I have tr tried this. Uh, that's actually me in the, in the middle. Uh, yeah, that's also me uh, from another trip. Um, it, it's really cool. Like, it, I, I mean, it's a lot different th than snowboarding. You have to get this board. Uh, it's mostly made of wood and then you have to put wax on the other downside of the board and then yeah you just roll to through this like huge uh, uh, sand dune um, that you see like you saw in the last picture yeah yeah so uh, I have a video uh, that um, shows like so you can try to imagine how how it feels um, it starts it starts a little bit slow and then as you go further down you gain speed um, it doesn't always end well yeah you take like a sand shower and and like you you get your head and body in the sand it's um, but it's fun it's worth it but yeah I mean one of the problems is you you actually have to get all the way up to try it again <laughs> and yeah, I don't think that's a, a very easy thing to do. Uh, and then there's also, um, again, the camping. As I said before, the Bedouins prepare everything for us, the food, the fire, the entertainment. Uh, when we gather around the, uh, the fire, many bring actually musical instruments and they start to sing along. It's, it's really... It's really fascinating, like, like the Bedouins have this um, fresh life. It's just like it brings you back to, to, to life. And as you can see, there are a lot of different form of tents, like the small camping European tents, the uh, Arabian style tents and stuff like that. And I've actually brought you some more pictures um, of the night sky. Uh, that's a really amazing one where we, you can see the fire with the tent and then part of the sky. That's one of the telescopes that uh, we take there to, to observe the, the planets and the nebulas, the galaxies. Uh, that's actually our Milky Way. That's the center of our galaxy. Uh, it's one of the amazing views. Like, when you go to the desert, uh, I don't know if even one of you um, like I have tried to go outside of the city and just look at the star, the stars. But in winter, when you go to a very dim place where there are no light pollutions, you can actually see this strand of, of, of light. Uh, that's our Milky Way. And you don't see it with colors, but yeah, you actually see such a beautiful uh, view. Yeah, here's a, a lot of uh, another photos. You can, you can drive further away uh, to the south and then you will get to this place, uh, Jara Cave, uh, and it's it's really known for its astonishing rock column formations that is falling from the ceiling. It's really huge too, uh, as you can see. Okay, so that was uh, our trip a bit, a little bit uh, so, uh, south from the Siwa, from Siwa. So we went from first 
from Cairo to Siwa and then from Siwa to uh, like the southern eastern part here uh, where we can see the white desert and the black desert and now let's get a little bit high uh, like how about the highest point in Egypt but to do this we will have to travel all this way back to Cairo and then through the Suez Canal and then further to south until this area which is uh, the southern part of Sinai so in this area in this southern part of Sinai we have uh, a very small decent uh, city called Saint Catherine where it actually snows just like Europe as you can see here it like we have snow yeah I mean yeah we have snow it's not common this doesn't have uh, happen every year but most years in winter it actually snows pretty a lot and that's due to the high elevation of the city like the, the city itself lies uh, um, at around 1,500 1, meters above sea level uh, it has a population of around 4,600 people and as you can see it lies between mountains uh, I have been there uh, several times that's a photo I have taken from the city at night uh, as you can see it's a pretty small city that just lay, lies around uh, a couple of like mountain chains and stuff so uh, one of the many things that uh, the area is famous for is the St. Catherine's Monastery and that's one of the oldest working Christian monasteries in the world until now uh, it has been it was built between 548 and 560 years uh, like uh, AD. It's open to public. People can go to, um, to the monastery and visit it. Uh, it has one of the very oldest libraries that has been continually working until today. Uh, and it's worth the visit, I would say, yeah. Uh, so let's uh, take a side note on some geography uh, so as you can see this is the city of Sinai and this is the monastery and the highest point in Egypt is a mountain not very far from this place it's called Mount Cat uh, Catherine or Mount Catherine as we call it in Egypt and to go to this place you will have to walk through a valley a very long valley and cross uh, like another valley uh, and until you get to the base of the mountain the base of the mountain that's this area here it takes around like 30 hours to go and to come back uh, through this track uh, it's like a, a long hiking um, trip uh, that that's a photo from the, the the valley itself as I said yeah it takes around five, 15 hours to go from the city to the base of the mountain and then around a couple of hours more to actually uh, go on top of the mountain but it's worth it because you will have the view of your life of a lifetime uh, it's the highest point in Egypt you can actually see a lot of fascinating views from up there uh, from the, the the mountainous landscape of the area where the sunlight is moving around uh, because most of the people actually uh, climb at night uh, to to observe the the sunrise from above it's a it's danger it's like more dangerous than climbing at day but it's worth it because you actually have the opportunity to observe the sunrise and you see that the sun rays as they first touch the tip of the mountains and then they become uh, lower and lower and lower until they uh, until the sun comes up to the sky and and lifts everything and one of the the amazing views also that one can see uh, is the clouds and that's one photo of the one of the photos that I took during this trip uh, the mountains are so high that you are even above the clouds and it looks like islands that come uh, higher than the sea around it um, and w with this you can actually have like it's like you, you are standing above the clouds um, I will show I will show you a, a video later on on how this actually 
looks like. Um, but you can imagine it's it's one of the most wonderful feelings one can have uh, beside the coldness, of course. Like, I mean, it's not very sweet there. Um, that's also uh, another uh, perspective from the same view, but uh, to another cloud formation. Uh, and it goes along, it goes all the way. It's, it's, you can't just put your camera down. Also, that, that's one of the most amazing views you will see. It's the actual sunrise uh, from above, uh, above the clouds, above the mountain. It's just unexplainable. You, can, you, can, you just have to feel it. And I know like uh, most of the countries have a lot of high mountains. Um, Mount Catherine is, is not very high. It's only... Uh, around 2,600 kilometers above sea level. It's not very high, but at the end you get this beautiful view of the of the of the area. Yeah, that's what you feel when you reach the top, and um, you are just very thankful that <laughs> you you got there. Uh, that's me actually. Yeah, and then I tried to capture uh, uh, a photo from above from above the clouds but uh, it, it was like a huge failure uh, that's venus that's uh, the milky way and it was uh, uh, like there was a lot of cloud and water vapor in the in the atmosphere you, you just couldn't have a very bright view uh, but i was lucky with another photo i actually i even used the luck of my life i would say uh, to capture this photo i was getting a normal uh, sky view when this um, falling star just shot in front of the camera and I got this amazing picture of, of a shooting star uh, which, is, which is actually not, not an actual star it's just a rock uh, going through the atmosphere I have one final uh, video uh, uh, that compares how the clouds move uh, from above from the perspective of someone who's standing above like uh, the clouds and one who's standing below the clouds. Um, it was yeah, shot with the Egyptian site for astronomy. That's where uh, as I told I volunteer. Yeah, it's amazing. I, I mean, we have all seen this view, uh, but you don't see this view much. I mean, yeah, probably from an airplane. Um, that is, th this one is in fast forward mode, actually both. Uh, yeah, normally they don't, uh, yeah, and as you can see, like you are just standing, and and clouds are coming through you. Um, it's it's amazing, uh, and yeah, that's that's one part of Egypt. Uh, there there's a lot of other places I haven't talked about, uh, like uh, Valley of the Whales, where we have fossils of of forty million years old whales with arms and legs and. Uh, a lot of different places for diving, like the Blue Hole, Dahab, and I mean, yeah, that's Egypt without the pharaohs. And I hope, uh, I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, and hopefully, in another time, we will get we will get the opportunity to talk about um, other places, wonderful places in Egypt. So, good night and have a wonderful evening.